Hello, puppies and kittens. I'm speaking to a Ugandan secular activist about his organization. Yes. Yeah, uh, Solomon. Uh, the first name is Solomon. Yes, my first name is Solomon. Okay. Yep. Yeah, on previous messages, that I, I saw the names reversed. All right. So, uh, tell me about what it's like to be a secularist in Uganda. Wow, a uh, secularist. Uh... First, uh, my name is uh, Masereka Solomon from Uganda, okay. and uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, a teacher by profession right now, and uh, I work with uh, a primary school, humanist school, so our school is uh, on the foundation of uh, science, humanism, and uh, we, we are very new in the community. People think uh, being a, a secularist is kind of weird, but... Uh, from reading, when, when you kind of, uh, you have gone to school, you're fine with it. You find that uh, you can really know the lifestyle you, you're living. We get uh, problems of uh, being called either Satanist, uh, they may call you devilish, because uh, either you don't appear in charge, uh, but uh, to be simple with uh, people, being uh, a humanist or a secularist, I'm sorry, there's a child who is a kind of disturbing her here, but I'll control it. <laughs> now, being a secularist in Uganda, it is uh, not uh, easy because uh, people are religious. Uganda is a religious country, and uh, very many people are into religion. So you kind of uh, become isolated. I didn't catch that. Say that again, please. Uh, when, when you are research kind of... in Uganda, there are very many religions. There's Islamic, there's a Christianity. So mm -hmm. people know that uh, you really have to be in a religion to be considered a human. So being a secularist, you kind of are isolated. Yeah. Yeah, it, yes. believe me, I get that. We have areas of the United States. The, the rural areas, where especially where it, it, it can get that way. No. I'll put also this clear. You know, on Sundays, many people have to go to church. On Fridays, many people have to go to the mosque. But uh, being a secularist, uh, really, you, you have to... Sorry, you're doing fine, okay? You're fine. Being a secularist, you you really have to handle a lot, explaining to people why going to church is uh, either not necessary or it's necessary. Being a secularist, I myself, I can really give the main reasons of uh, going to church because if I'm to go to church, uh, I'm really associating. Uh, I may not be going to church uh, to, to pray, but to really associate with people. But uh, here, people take going to church as a, a really divine thing. Yeah, I don't know how to relate to that because I, I was fortunate in that I never, I could never go to church. I mean, I went to church four or five times in the, in my life to sit through services. Uh, yeah, it, you, even as you a don't child. Go to church. Yeah, even even as a child. I, it, no, my, my grandparents yeah. took me to church and, and they, they took me out of the church after one day because I told them uh, that the, the guy behind the podium was lying. Okay. Now, here, you, you really, you cannot go to church. It's fine. But in families, in families, you, you find that going to church could be something which you have to do even if you are a secularist or a humanist. You really don't have to isolate yourself. See? So I can go to church, but I know myself that I'm going to church either to listen to what they're trying to preach. You pick the good, uh, whatever they speak. You can relate to your life and their life. Okay. Well, I guess that was another problem I had with church. And, uh, Nothing yeah. ever did. <laughs> the, other thing, <laughs> thing, the other thing, Aaron, the other thing is um in uganda churches are very many churches are very many 
in other words, religious institutions are very many. Churches are even more than the hospitals that we have. Churches are more than even the schools that we have. So you find that you really can't avoid seeing a church or even going to a church, regardless of being a humanist or a secularist. So you'll find yourself explaining to the Christians that, hey, you can be a better, you can be a better humanist or Christian. Uh, you can be a better Christian uh, when you follow the humanist principles or ethos. Can you relate to that? I get that kind of prejudice I get often, prejudice. but I don't. I don't have a community that is. Oh, we we don't have a community. I don't think that is that overwhelmingly religious that everybody in the community has to go or they would be dehumanized if they didn't go. I mean, I've heard of, I've heard of areas heard of, like that, I've areas. but I've never seen it. Yeah. Yeah. In Uganda, it is uh, really present in Uganda. Churches are many and uh, schools are few. Hospitals are many, are few than even churches. So you find that we have a crisis of the real basic human needs for the sake of religion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I can only speak to my own experiences here, but I'm I, I can only speak I'm interested in hearing uh, yours. I'm interested in hearing uh, yours. Mm. So, uh, what we do as a, a community, or as myself, we we really do a lot of charity. We do charity, and our charity is uh, giving education to the less privileged. So you find that uh, we try to show that uh, you can be a good person even without being in a church. We can do what people think you have to do while in church. Yeah, I looked up your. So I, up I, your, up your uh, I looked your up your Facebook and uh, the one for your organization. Looked at some of the pictures where you've got some kids yeah, like with yeah. the, the the apron on that. It gives the logo and everything. And I was surprised that you could be in, in Uganda and declare yourself to be secular because you mentioned before, I mean, there are people who think that if you're secular, then you are of the devil. Is that not right? Yes. I'm, no, I realize there's a delay between us, but I'm, I'm interested in hear, hearing your account. Okay, uh, we I work in two organizations. One is a school, and one is a, a private other entity, another private entity, which mm -hmm. we founded with some other colleagues. And uh, we, we were interested in uh, advocating for more secular ideas. Secular ideas based on uh, uplifting humanity in need. We look at the needy because uh, this life, uh, we have to really look for why are we alive? So why are we alive in our community? We really want to help people. So you find that we form several kind of projects in uh, trying to help people. We pay school fees for some children, buying scholastic materials, we buy uniforms for children. When during Corona, you buy food and you give to those who cannot manage. So we really do charity, and uh, for humanism, charity would be the best. Even uh, for the secularist, if you are a secularist, uh, how do you help people? These are questions we kind of ask ourselves. Because our community setting, when you look at religion, you can't really keep on fighting religion when you're not helping people. So you really have to show the importance of uh, being a human being, not just being in a religion. So you find that we do charity-based work. And in doing so, people will uh, understand that the basics we are supposed to be doing is helping each other. You can go pray and pray, but how is your prayer helping your neighbor? Yeah. Yeah, the, the old saying that uh, two hands working can accomplish more than a thousand hands clasped in prayer. Yes, that is it. So the other thing is uh, in uh, Uganda, the setup 
uh, how the outside world, maybe like uh, North America, South America, or Europe, how humanism is uh, ident- is uh, is uh, defined in Africa or secularism in Africa. It, it really has a different dimension. You know, you're dealing with a, a poor a, a poor community. It's a developing community. So when you define secularism. Uh, you really can't define it as uh, Europe is defining it. You're not supposed to define it as America is defining it because here we are defining secularism in a poor community. We are defining humanism in a poor community. We are defining religion in a poor community. So you find that everything really cannot tally the way it tallies in uh, Europe. So basically, it is doing charity in Africa. We can have uh, meetings, but our meetings are in a poor community. It cannot be a meeting like it is held in Europe, where the, the environment is classy, you see? So our definitions really have to vary, and uh, people abroad have to understand that humanism or secularism or religion in Africa is, uh, is having an aspect of poverty around everything. So when there is poverty around everything, things change. Things change, and uh, you can only understand a situation if you have lived in that situation. Tell me about, uh, Tell me about Abramak Secular Services. How did you, how did, how did you come up with that name, and how does, how is that name interpreted in Uganda? Uh, Abramak is uh, a name, and uh, we, we got it uh, from uh, the founders. Mark is uh, a friend who is in uh, Australia. Mark he is called Mark Hoban. So this is the person who kind of uh, inspired us in doing more good for our community. Then Abri, Abri is a word in... Uh, in some language, which means uh, a home. And uh, we wanted to kind of tag the name home with Mark. Home which is of friend. Mark. Friend. Yeah, he's, he's a friend. And was really he's inspiring. A That's gotcha. a he's gotcha. an atheist. Okay. And, how do, and how do... Yes. How do uh, how do Ugandans interpret when you when you have the aprons that say Abramak Secular Services? How do Ugandans interpret the word secular? What do they think that means? Uh, secular, they think uh, maybe we are bad people. They, they think we are bad people. They they think, uh, uh, but we, we have not really had a kind of uh, confusion with that name. We myself, uh, when somebody is asking about why are you secular? Why are you not religious? My response is simple. Uh, I'm really not there to argue with the religion, but I'm there to do good. And that would be my religion, to do good. So when somebody tries to argue, what I know is you, far, you cannot argue religion. You cannot argue such a thing because uh, it will not help anyone. That is my point. That is one. I don't argue the secular word with this person who is kind of religious because it does not help. There's nothing that uh, is developmental about arguing who is a better Christian or who is a, who is a secularist. Because how, what, what is so important is uh, how, how important are you to the community, not how religious are you to the community. Yeah. So uh, I myself... I advocate for no arguing for religious things because they really don't help. The best thing we can do is uh, helping one another. And how how do you go about how doing that? You? I mean, like the picture the picture of the girls that had the, the the aprons on. What were they doing in that picture? In that picture, we we had those aprons when we were distributing. Uh, food during COVID. Uh, people oh. are in lockdown. Yeah, people are in lockdown and uh, there were restrictions of movement. So some people were lacking food and were trying to share the small that we had with uh, 
the neighbors. So it was a kind of an identity to show that uh, these people are supplying food. Good job. And how long have you been doing this? How long have you been doing this? Uh, we have been doing this since uh, 2015. 2015, we have been doing charity works, helping the youth in sports, uh, kind of advocating for sports. Uh, we do debates in schools, uh, very many charity projects we have been doing. We've been doing gardening, giving seeds to children to plant in school and look at how food grows in gardens. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the motto of this show, the Raw Men podcast, and I haven't been, I haven't done one of these in a, in a while. It's been like, a, I don't know, I think a year, but the, the motto of the show is that anybody can complain and everybody does. And, uh, but I'm interested in talking to the people who not only have a plan to make things better, but that are actually doing something to implement that. So I wanted to thank you for being the first person I've seen in a bit <laughs> that I could get on the show to talk about that. Who's actually doing something to make things better. Aaron, I'm really happy that you hosted me on your show, though I may not have uh, elaborated more of uh, what you what we do. But uh, yes. one thing is, I appreciate what uh, I appreciate uh, hosting me on your show, and uh, I appreciate also being part of you. But uh, one point to make clear is, uh, I advocate for uh, secularism being uh, doing good. I really pray. When I use the word pray, my English is, it is a request to people that if you are a secularist and you're not believing in God or you don't believe in these divine powers, the best thing we can do as people is to help one another. That would be the best thing instead of arguing with the religious people because even if we argue with religious people, we are not helping anyone. The best thing we can do is to help even the religious people to know that human beings need to save human beings. Yeah. Yeah. We can we can discuss creationism, we can discuss these Jesus things, but those things don't help man. Things that help man is being good to one another, these golden rules. Be good well, then- to one another. Do do what you wish to be done to you. So then let's t- let's elaborate as you suggested on on what your organization does or how they do it. Uh, on my organization, we want uh, support. We want support. Anyone who wants to help people, uh, you can do it with us. That is what I, that is what I'm asking for. If you want to do good for people, you can work it with us here in Africa. And I've stated it that here in Africa, it is poverty. There is a richness in Africa. There is wealth in Africa, but it is covered with poverty, corruption in our leadership. So you find that what would be good, Africa, is turned to be bad because of our leadership. But Africa is a good continent. It is a wealthy continent. But you find that there is a lot of poverty, not because people are not hardworking, but because uh, our governments are really kind of... Our governments want uh, want, uh, Africans to keep in poverty. So you find that uh, our governments have debts with uh, European kind of uh, IMF banks. We have loans there. These loans affect the person on ground. So you, you find that uh, we're really, we really stuck. Uh, the population in Africa is stuck. It wants to develop, but the governments don't want them to develop. You see? So the Europeans, Africa cannot develop without Europe. Africa cannot develop without America. Even without China, these people need to really work with Africans, not governments in Africa, but Africans. Because when you work with Africans, you are really working with the real people. But when you work with African governments, you're not working with Africans. You're just working with 
papers only. So my request is one, if you're in Europe or any other continent apart from Africa, and you want to help people in Africa, you really have to work with people who are doing the small, small good things. So my request is, if you want to do good as a humanist or a secularist, you can work with us and we do some changes in our communities. I remember in the early 80s or mid 80s yes. when, uh, when they, they did a, a charity concert, uh, Bob Geldof of the Boomtown Rats hosted this thing. I think they called it Live Aid. And he was complaining on one of the TV shows that they, they managed to raise all this money. They bring all this food They were going to some African country. I don't remember if it was Ethiopia or wherever it was, but they were trying to bring food to some African country and they had problems dealing with the administration. The government was government getting in the way. And so they have all of this food that was rotting on the docks essentially. So what they did was that they brought in food on bombers on old world war II bombers and were and were bombing villages with parachutes of food just kind of like getting around the uh, the administration getting around the government's obstruction and i don't know how true that is but that's something that he said on tv mm. uh, it it relates to my statement what i've said that if europe or any other international community apart from africa if you want to develop africa you really have to work with Africans, not governments in Africa. You see? So when yep. you work with Africans, uh, it is written, Africans can develop when you cooperate with the international community. So we really want uh, uh, Europeans or even Americans to understand that uh, people need you. People in Africa need Americans. People in Africa need Europeans. People in Africa need Chinese. We don't need, we don't need the government, but we need people in China. We need people in America. We need people in Europe to uplift Africans. You know, when Europeans, when one European uh, considers an African one, then you will see development. You will not even see these issues of scammers online. Be you're seeing scammers online because people in Europe or even other continents, they, they, they take everyone online to be a scammer. But the thing is, you'll always see scammers online if you don't agree to work with these individual people you see online. When you work with them, even scammers will reduce. But scammers will always be there, provided you don't trust a single individual from Africa. So if you trust one single individual in Africa as a European or as an American, you're doing a difference. Because we deceive ourselves that we are fighting scammers, but we are not helping. We are not helping. My prayer is Americans, Europeans should trust any single person online. You, you trust them and uh, you teach them the manners that you want. If you don't want them to be scammers, teach them how to avoid being a scammer. You will be helping the whole world. But when you, when you kind of uh, reject whoever you're seeing online, you're creating more scams. So how does your organization, like when you said you were redistributing, you were distributing food, I mean, how, do you, how do you get the food or, or what other programs do you do? That, you know, you, cause you're, if you're talking about getting support from Africans or if you be getting support from Americans or Europeans, they're going to want to know what okay. it is that you're doing. Uh, I've, I've you're been, doing. yes, Warren, I've been lucky. I've worked with uh, several people who have never seen me even physically. And uh, because of the trust, they have uh, sent funds to us through either the organization or individually to me. And uh, these people request that, yes, you're doing good. Can you have a food bank for your community? And we tried that during COVID. We stocked food and we gave to whoever wanted food. We even randomly delivered food to people that we even don't know. I've given food to people that even don't know me, even I don't know them, and they appreciate that. You see? So... That's what we've been doing. We have a food bank, only that it, it operates when we are able. 
some of the projects are, are dead now. Some projects are still living. I'm a teacher, I'm still working in a school and I'm giving my service as a teacher to children. I teach children, I teach the youth, I support sports, I give. When you ask me, I give. When I don't have, then I don't have. That's yeah. my motto. When you ask, when children ask, they need food, I give when I'm able. When children ask, they don't have books, either their parents are broke at home, I can buy a book for a child. I can buy pens for children. I can buy balls for a school so that children can play. You see? I can buy mm-hmm. uniform if a child is shabby in, uh, in other children. I can buy the uniform. And uh, I really don't want rewards. But what I know is I feel good when I'm doing that good thing. So Abramak is there as a charity. La- uh, yes, what I can tell the world is is uh, to be good people. What I can tell everyone there is to be good people to one another. Avoid these issues of whom do you believe in or who is your God. Avoid such a discussions because they don't help. Discussions that help is how are you going to get food or what kind of education are you giving someone that would be better for us. 